composed by three interactive speeches, each, each beginning with the presentation of activities and results achieved in the framework of the GSTEM project, and finishing with a question-answer session. The three speeches are an overview on the GSTEM project, objectives and aims, which is uh, a speech held by me and by Eli Brander from University of Turku, Finland. The second speech will be art and mini games for STEM from students for students, which is held by Gret Beckert from St. Levin's School College, Belgium, and Michela Tramonti from uh, Utrecht, Italy. And the last one will be uh, generating game ideas with your students, which is which will be held by Mikhail Fiadotau from Tallinn University, Estonia. I'm sorry for the spelling of some names and so on, but okay, they, they are quite complicated. Okay, I would start immediately with this presentation with the first speech, the first speech which will be held by me and Eli Brander. My name is Antonio Giordano and I work for Pixel, which is a contractual partner in the GSTEM European project. The project applicant of the project is University of Turku, here represented by Heli Brander. So I would kindly ask Heli to brief present herself. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning to you all, also on my behalf. My name is Heli Brander and I work as an education coordinator and project manager at the University of Turku, Finland. And today I'm here in the role of a coordinator of the GA STEM Erasmus Plus project. As I'm giving this presentation with Antonio sitting here behind my desk at home in Turku, I can't help thinking that I could be in Florence, Italy, where this conference event was originally supposed to be organized. It didn't work out quite as we planned, so this is why I decided to pretend that I actually am in Florence and you can do that too by imagining this view around you. I'm very happy to be here today in the context of this project that we are finalizing with my European colleagues. And I already want to thank our whole team. Uh, and of course, especially uh, for Pixel for hosting our event in your conference. Uh, also, I'm so happy to see all of you participants here with us today. And I wish you have a pleasant conference with us. Thank you. Thanks, Eli, and thanks also for the view of Florence, which is anyway, it, it is always beautiful. So now we can immediately enter the GIA STEM uh, project, which is funded under the Erasmus Plus program and is implemented under the action of the strategic partnership at school education. GSTEM is the acronym of the project original title, which is Enhancing STEM Skills Through Arts and Mini Games. And the longer title already contains the project keywords, which are STEM, Arts and Mini Games. The project started on October 2018 and will be over, unfortunately, in 12 days, uh, 31 of March 2021. The project partnership of the GSTEM project includes partners from four different European countries, Finland, Italy, Belgium and Estonia. The project applicant, as we said, is the University of Turku from Finland. And from Finland, we also have the Rieskalde School. From Italy, there are three different partners, Utrecht, Istituto Comprensivo Maria Montessori from Terracina and Pixel. Two partners from Estonia, Tallinn University and Tamsalu Gymnasium, and only one representative from Belgium, St. Lievens College. As you can see, the partnership has been created so to have two university partners from Turku and Tallinn, four different school partners, one for each partner country, and two partner organizations, both from Italy. And this is us in a picture which was taken in November 2019 in Ghent, when it was still possible to meet each other and no social distancing was required. But we will surely uh, uh, come back to this kind of normality. So the context of the uh, GSTEM project. The worldwide surveys show that EU students often lack mathematical competencies and key basic competencies in science and te technology. On the other hand, 
demand for STEM professionals and associate professionals is expected to grow by around 8% by 2025, much higher than the average 3% growth forecast for all occupations. Employment in STEM-related sectors is also expected to rise by around 6.5% by 2025. So there is a strong demand for STEM skills, but on the other hand, uh, we notice that there is a kind of lack of mathematical competencies and key basic competencies in science and technology. In this context, the specific common national needs emerging among the countries involved in the project are emphasizing the joy of learning. The best way to tackle the problem of insufficient school results is not to raise standards or increase time spent teaching, but make school a more interesting and fun place for everyone. Improving social inclusion and gender equity in education, developing schools as learning communities, favoring a more interdisciplinary teaching and learning in European schools and increasing the collaboration among teachers from different subjects and reinforcing school and teacher networks to share resources and best practices. On the basis of this specific context, the objectives of the GSTEM European project are the following. Improving motivation in scientific study through the use of artworks and creativity in learning. Using and utilizing the attractiveness of the arts and technology to improve social inclusion. Supporting STEM skills of both teachers and students for promoting professional careers in the fields of <coughs> science and technology. Promoting interdisciplinarity approach in learning by improving the collaboration between teachers and school, and finally, the discovery of European cultural heritage constituted of artwork produced in the partner countries as well. The aims of the project, increasing learning motivation, improving social inclusion for students, promoting schools as communities that favor interdisciplinary teaching and learning, strengthening school networks to share resources and good practices. Which are the target groups of the GSM project? To whom it is that the project is addressed to? The target groups of the project are secondary school teachers as the main target group and 13 up to 16 years old students as secondary target group who will benefit from, who currently benefit from the project's results. And about them, which are the expected results of the GSM project? And then Heli will uh, guide us through the different results that we achieved. Anyway, the GSM project support teachers and students to become co-creator and constructor of their personalized learning. And today, personalized learning is really, really important, as well as uh, a personalized teaching process and tools to be used in uh, uh, a kind of approach which can be useful for both teachers and students. In addition, the project, with introduction of art in the mathematics and science study, empowers STEM education, teaching and learning processes in young students. On one hand, this helps students with studying and learning difficulties to learn discovering through a more personalized and creative learning process. On the other, the discovery of existing relations between science and arts in teaching makes science on or scientific subjects more interesting and attractive by facilitating the development of creating and complex ideas in students. So this is everything from me, and I will immediately leave the floor to Heli. I will make her presenter within this. Okay, now Heli, the stage is, is yours, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, in Erasmus Plus program, when we talk about intellectual outputs, uh, we're talking about the concrete, tangible and meaningful outcomes of the project activities. These outcomes can be, for example, publications, e-learning materials or some kind, other kind of products or services. In GA STEM project, project, we have produced all together three intellectual outputs that reflect all our project's main actions. The project team has developed these outputs 
together during the whole project's timeline by following the schedule of our project plan. And next, I will introduce these intellectual outputs to you one by one. Our first intellectual output is a report called Framework to Integrate Art in STEM Using Digital Games. First of all, this report provides a theoretical view of moving from STEM towards STEAM approach in learning process of young students. Secondly, it provides a collection of examples of how to integrate art into STEM education by using mini games and game scenarios. Thirdly, it describes the criteria we have used in our project in selecting the math and science exercises that support teachers to organize STEAM related project work with their students at school uh, during their normal studying. And as for language, uh, this first intellectual output is available only in English. Our second intellectual output is teachers online course Art and Minigames, which is tailored on supporting the learning process and needs of young students. The aim of this intellectual output is uh, to serve as a pilot in implementing and testing the GSD methodology and tools that we have produced in the project among our target groups, uh, secondary school teachers and 13 to 16 year old students. The course has altogether four models. It's estimated to take uh, 30 hours of work and it includes theme related e-learning content such as multimedia lessons, guidelines, game scenarios, and lecture notes. And just as intellectual output one, also art and minigames course and its materials are available only in English. Our third intellectual output is again a report called Outputs and Recommendations on Arts and Minigames in STEM Education. This report provides description of the activities and analyses of the results achieved during our teacher's online course and its piloting phase with the students. It also describes the student performances in terms of what kind of knowledge, skills and competencies they developed and what kind of exercises they carried out. And it describes the best practices implemented in schools involved including also the study projects developed by the students. Finally, it provides a collection of recommendations based on the strengths and weaknesses of the activities that were identified in order to adjust the project methodology for future implementations. Unlike the other ones, this intellectual output is available in five languages, English, Estonian, Finnish, Italian and Dutch. As a conclusion, I'll give you yet a few peaks that concretely indicate the GSTEM project's results. During a process of realizing our intellectual outputs, 86 teachers from different countries enrolled in the arts and minigames course, and finally, mainly due to restrictions of COVID-19, 62 of them fully completed the course and received their certificate. 153 students took part in the piloting phase by carrying out STEAM-related project work at school with their teacher. And within this activity, several game ideas that combine STEM and arts were created. And all these mentioned topics uh, will be discussed more in the following speeches during this conference. From all the project-related activities and results, you can find out more by getting familiar with the three intellectual outputs, which either are or will soon be available at the GSTEM website. Finally, I want to thank all of you for your interest in our conference event and this presentation. On behalf of the whole GSTEM project team, I also want to thank all project participants 
for their input and contribution for our project. Thank you very much. Thanks, Haley. Despite the fact that we started a bit later, we finished perfectly on time. So now, if there is any question from the audience, we will be happy, me, Ellie, and the entire partnership we will be happy to reply to your questions. If you have any question, any doubts or, or everything, you can uh, uh, just unmute your microphone or you can just type your question in the public chat. Don't be shy about that. If you want to speak, the chat is a good possibility. I see someone is taping, typing. And then as soon as we finish this part with the answer, uh, the question and answer session, we will move to the second presentation within this multiplier event. Okay, thank you. Would be nice to see here about one concrete example on mini. Okay, this was just a kind of general overview and introduction to the project some practical examples and i would say uh, best practices will be uh, the, will be analyzed in the second part of this multiplier event anyway thanks titi for your input yes there will be some practical examples uh, immediately after this first speech as there will be uh, one speech will be mainly focused on uh, some practical example and uh, some concrete example uh, on how the project was used by the students, which is the main focus within the project. So uh, uh, in order to have a level of motivation by the students, so we will see some practical examples of how the project was used by students. And in the last part, there will also be an example about mini games. So, Yes, your question is welcome, and also as uh, uh, Haley just uh, wrote, for any other example or suggestion that you can use in your teaching routine, you can make reference uh, to the uh, project website. Uh, when uh, Ellie has been speaking about the three intellectual output, uh, I also uh, copy and paste the link, the direct link to the each specific section of the website about the third in intellectual output. I would say that the um, versions of these intellectual output in national languages, we are still working on them. They will be uh, uploaded, uh, uh, uploaded as soon as possible, but some national versions are already available. If there is, if there is any other question from the audience? Otherwise, okay, just let's wait for other few seconds if there is any question. Otherwise, I think that according to the timetable, we can move to the second speech within this multiplier event. I don't see any typing person, so I would thank again Heli for uh, this presentation. Uh, and then uh, uh, I will leave the floor to our colleague Gret from Belgium. First of all, I would kindly ask Gret to please turn on her webcam. Yeah, um, Armida, we will we will speak uh, soon in the in the next sessions within the multiplayer end with we will speak about the mini games and we will reply to your question anyway thanks for your question so i now i'm leaving the floor to gret and michaela for the second speech within this multiplier event gret has already the presenting power within this platform so i will just <laughs> mute myself yeah, it's, uh, it's me okay <laughs> thank you I will start with Michaela. Please, Michaela, now you are presenter and I will mute myself. The stage is yours, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good morning to everyone. And um, uh, I'm Michaela uh, Tramonti uh, from uh, EU Track. 
and I will introduce you the main organization and main results of the, our uh, piloting uh, testing phase. Uh, and then uh, um, my colleague, uh, Great, will explain, uh, uh, describe the experience with, uh, with the students. Okay, the main steps of the piloting phase was the first one is um, was addressed to the teacher training because it's not uh, easy to, um, to, to be familiar with uh, uh, our uh, proposed methodology. And uh, they attended the, the training and uh, uh, in a WGSM platform, uh, mainly focused on four modules improving STEM skills using the arts, combining arts and game for STEM, working with the game mechanics and game concept, and the, uh, the last model so, um, aimed uh, to describe uh, how to, uh, to organize the, the, in the best way the piloting uh, phase. Uh, with this, uh, the students' project work uh, um, in their classes, um, the student project work um, was um, uh, aimed uh, um, uh, to, to focus. One, uh, the students should uh, design a game idea and to define their game idea, try to combine the artworks and the scientific topics. It's a very challenge. And then they uh, could try the game concept design and, uh, and develop their game. But what we asked firstly is uh, to try to, um, to organize, to describe, to create their game concept idea. Um, only the, um, the, the smart, uh, smart students tried to, to make their, their games. So it, it was not, they uh, didn't, uh, um, uh, weren't obliged to do that. But uh, we asked them for, uh, to combine in a game idea, artworks, scientific topics. And then they, um, they follow with the template provided. They try to describe the, uh, their game idea, uh, also to um, try to use, uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, digital uh, uh, tools uh, as a scratch or uh, some handmade uh, uh, game, and uh, and then they could uh, um, could describe their game and prototype. Um, for uh, some uh, some uh, uh, game and prototypes, uh, you can find uh, in, uh, in the website in, uh, in the intellectual output tree some description of uh, the uh, the game uh, the students project work made uh, of course by the students so uh, our uh, um, target group was 153 students from belgium Finland, italy and greece we had a lot of problems uh, due to the pandemic because uh, this kind of activities some teacher found uh, some difficulties to manage this kind of activities but we manage. Greece is not a part of our uh, partnership, and it was great to have them in uh, in this uh, experimentation. And uh, of course, all the students and all the teachers involved um, uh, made a great uh, job with uh, with uh, uh, this experimentation. And the most of them is male and the ages uh, uh, from uh, 11 and uh, 16. So um, we tried to, to understand the initial attitude towards art and mini games concept development. And the student, most of the students think uh, that the use of the arts could increase their interest in the scientific uh, study. Um, but some of them um, uh, kept their neutral position. They didn't know about uh, um, what, what can, can happen with the artworks um, in the scientific study. But uh, most of them know what is the game concept. And it, some of them tried to make the, uh, some games, uh, very small games. 
uh, but uh, some of them would like uh, to do uh, uh, to do it uh, and uh, to taste it. We try to uh, to provide the teacher with uh, some suggestion on how to uh, to realize this uh, piloting phase, uh, mainly with uh, uh, with the um, uh, the problem with the pandemic. So uh, first of all, the teacher has uh, all at their disposal all the learning materials already selected and studied during the training phase. So they uh, have uh, at their or disposal all the mini games produced during uh, from the project team, uh, producing as example um, during the project time. And uh, uh, this uh, website uh, is uh, published uh, on the, the GSM, um, GSM website, and uh, you can download uh, all the learning resources that you can find useful. In this case, uh, the teacher, in the first option, the teacher could use these uh, learning materials already selected, already uh, prepared by the project team, and the students could uh, take these materials and modify and transform this example and uh, to create uh, new ideas, new mini game concepts, uh, and so on. The second option, it was more challenge for the students because uh, uh, the teacher could use uh, these uh, old materials that we have prepared just uh, as example to be shown their students what is uh, um, what they should do and then the students were able to choose their own artworks and identify their connection between artworks and the scientific subject try to make their, uh, their their mini game design uh, idea and assets. It was a more challenge, but they did. All of the project work uh, made by the students were uploaded in the GSM platform, and some of we can see today with great uh, some uh, some one experience. And uh, we have also published um, two videos. That one of them we will watch today about the experience uh, with the students one uh, these two videos uh, one is uh, published on the website of the project one is uh, uh, is uh, related to italian students and the other one from the belgium students what are what are the main results of course the students uh, um, uh, found that uh, they have a better understanding of the real application of the mathematics and the science concept by using the arts comparing the results achieved before and after we revealed as uh, um, an important uh, improvement so it's a uh, useful to use the art to uh, to approach mathematics and scientific subject because um, it became more immediate the relation between scientific topics and the uh, and the reality and of course they increase the motivation and the interest in the study of scientific subject mainly mathematics and science uh, all of these kinds of uh, of uh, results are uh, uh, more in, in uh, described in details uh, are available on the website uh, in, in the um, intellectual output tree uh, and now i would like to to keep um, to introduce uh, uh, my colleague Grit from belgium and she will explain to you about uh, a real experience uh, uh, how to to make uh, to to do practice uh, GSM uh, pro methodology? Thank you. Thank you, um, Michela. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Grit Bekert from a school in Belgium. I'm a teacher uh, from Saint Levens College in Ghent. I'm teaching to students from the first and the second year, and um, I will tell you a little bit more about my experience, experience as a teacher and the experience of my students. After following the GSTEM lessons prepared by the different partners, the real work for the teacher starts. How are we going to implement this? Where are we going to let the pupils work out the existing lessons in a different way? or where are we going to let them start from scratch? 
I will tell you now a little bit more about the organization of the project at our school. We implemented this project as a noon activity. The pupils could participate voluntarily. Our aim was to get pupils from different fields of study together. So students from Latin and STEAM curricula had the opportunity to work together. Pupils from the first and second year of secondary school were also involved. Of the total number of students, 28% were girls and 72% were boys. We had five groups. In total, 22 people participated, four of them from the second year and 80 of them from the first year. Only three groups submitted a final result. In a first step, we looked together at the different examples of the pilot schools. Then we gave the, uh, the children a choice, taking an existing lesson or make a new start. All groups choose to start from scratch. First, they looked for a topic from the math curriculum that appealed to them the most. Secondly, they chose an artwork that they liked. One group chose a work of art by Jan van Eyck, because in Ghent, in 2020, it was the year of Van Eyck. They had seen an exhibition online and they wanted to see if they could link it to their math, cor math courses. These two parts went very well for the pupils. Because of COVID-19, we were completely dependent on online work, which is not always easy for pupil, pupils aged 12 to 14 years old. Working out a game ID was a very pleasant experience for them. And that too was quickly put down on paper. Working out the game itself using Scratch or other programming tools turned out not to be so easy. A first attempt was made, but the pupils ran out of time and were not able to elaborate further. As a teacher, it was a nice experience to see how excited the pupils were to get to work. It was also fun to see how they made the link between math and art. It was also great to see their amazement, not realizing that math can be used in art. I think this project has stimulated them to see mathematics from a different perspective. What was good about the project in my view as a teacher? The creativity of the pupils was stimulated. It was very nice to see them exploring how to link math with art. They had a lot of ideas and they saw this as a new challenge and started working smoothly and well. What could be better or what are the difficulties? Pupils have many ideas, but don't have enough time to do this in the regular lessons. This should be, perhaps be best be done in a project day at school. COVID-19 also threw a spanner in the works because the students co could not see each other physically and everything had to be done online. The students have reached also their limits regarding programming. What about the future? It presents us with great new challenges in education. And I think we need to investigate how we can fit this even more into various lessons and perhaps develop a project day around it. Now, Antonio will start a video made by our students and um, there you can see uh, what their game was. Today, we present you our game, The Man with the Flag. Today, we present was made by four students of the first year at St. Lievens College in Ghent. The four students are Marcel, Maarten, Luca and Lasse. And Lasse and Maarten will explain you the game today. During an afternoon activity at school, we had the opportunity to participate in a GA STEM project. The idea was to combine art and mathematics slash science. Our teachers showed us some examples designed by the pilot schools. We were then given the opportunity to work on them ourselves. There were two possibilities, further develop an existing game concept or working with a totally new idea. We chose the second 
First, we went looking for a work of art that was, is important to our city again. 2020 was the Van Eyck year in Ghent, so it was easy for us to choose a work of art by one of the Van Eyck brothers. The choice fell on Madonna met Canonique, Joris van der Palen, painted by Jan van Eyck. The game, I, the game is based on the paint Madonna met Canonique, Joris van der Palen, painted by Jan van Eyck. The man with the flag has been murdered. You must find out how the murder is by doing assignments about the paint and mathematic development surveys. Then the screen appears with the text, Jack the Flagman has been murdered. How did it? The game includes a, a feature, feature that allows you to draw and erase notes on the screen. Then teach these notes are kept after e each task because they can be helpful in the sequence tasks. The notes only disappear when the player erase them. If you answer a question correctly, you get 10 pounds. If you answer the question wrong, you will have to solve it again and you will not get any points. In the first task, you get to see the unfolding of the weapon that killed Jack. You must then find out which weapon killed Jack? You are given a choice of four. Sword, bow and arrow, firearm or gun, and this is the correct answer. An embrace, the development of the weapon, gun. Draw a 40 degree angle on the top of the flagpole and accent the legs of the angle as far as possible. Also draw an angle of about 28 degree on the underside of the flagpole and accent the legs. Where the two legs intersect is where the bullet will be. You have to click on the point where the bullet comes from on the painting. When the perpetrator has run away, you chase him. You walk through Ghent. Everywhere there are obstacles such as carts and pits. You move with the arrow keys along three lanes. Along the way there are checkpoints where you have to do exercises. If you make a mistake, you slow down. If you get it right, you earn five points and you get a boost. For example, being able to jump extra high or run extra fast. There are several coins or points on the track that you can use to buy new figures. Your starting character is the baby, which you get for free. After that, you can buy the Cardinal for 70 points the Blue Pope for 140 points and the Madonna for 210 points. If you bump into a bin or something similar, you die. Your respawn point is always in a different place. If you are in danger, the run will start again. You keep all your points. The player role is to find the murder in Singmet. The learning objective is to discover mathematics, we use construction of space, and geometry. The entertaining aspects are overcoming challenge by solving math problems and finding the murder. The main challenge is to find the murder. The genre is a 2 day platform and a detective game. The target group are students aged 13 to 16 years. The hardware platform is offline and on a PC bot, Mac OS, at Windows. Competition mode is a single player. Music, music part one, murder mystery in the beginning. Music part one, uh, part two, um, suit of the murder. It was fun to work on this. It was a challenge for us to combine mathematics with art. It was a win-win situation. We learned about Jan van Eyck and his art. And in the meantime, we touched on different subjects in math. Work out or game ID was no problem. It went quite smoothly. However, we were unable to make the game of a number of operations. Lack of time. We were not alone to come together because of the corona pandemic and had to do everything online. 
we still have too little knowledge and to draw a program, a computer, game or something. Nevertheless, this project has given us a number of new challenges. Thanks for your attention. You are now. So everyone, I'm a proud teacher because these are students from the first year. Uh, they have their first year in English at school and they did it for you in English. So um, I'm proud. Uh, what were the experience of the students? What do they say? Um, it was fun. It was great to make the link between arts and uh, science mathematics. Uh, being able to use the cre creativity for once, eh? they like it. And sometimes ab abstract subject matters was linked to reality in this way. Uh, what could be better? The many IDs we had were not feasible for us in a game because we have too little knowledge of programming and especially too little time. Having to do on everything online was not really fun. And due to COVID-19, the teachers gave us all the information online. It was more difficult to exchange everything with each other. And it was also more difficult to share our problems with our teacher in a targeted way. For the future, it would be nice if we can continue to work with this in the future. And maybe we can develop our game ID if we can program more and better. Conclusion. On the base of the result achieved, the GA STEM methodology and tools shows its innovation and effectiveness. Their usability is recognized by the teacher engaged in the experience. However, the proposed methodology should be extended and adapted further involving the concept of other scientific disciplines, biology, chemistry, etc. The GS STEM methodology and tools supported also both vertical and horizontal skills, useful for social inclusion and future professional careers. In particular, students have worked in groups and individually by favoring social and communication skills. Two of the major limits underlined by the method application during the pilot phase were that not all teachers are predisposed to work in a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary way and the restrictions due to COVID-19. Um, I would like to add uh, something uh, because thank you for uh, the um, share uh, resources it's uh, it will be very useful to um uh, to to see uh, uh, the other experiences and regarding uh, the uh, the gender um uh, in uh, europe we have the the, the contrary <laughs> problems we have a lot of uh, boys and less girls uh, but i um, uh, in my opinion, the uh, the use of the game and to challenge the students uh, in uh, uh, in um, the developing uh, the um, in the game design, it's uh, it can be more attractive, uh, of course, mainly for boys, as uh, our uh, results uh, um, achieved. Uh, how long did the pupils work on the developing the mini game? So the mini game was not the central focus of the um, of the methodology. The mini game idea development that we we have a, a short short experience with Mikhail with the, the next presentation. Um, it's the way to to challenge the students uh, to connect to put together uh, artworks and uh, and um, and the scientific topics um, we had uh, big problems with the pandemic 
because uh, the uh, the game development idea, the game development concept uh, required uh, uh, um, not uh, not uh, uh, an individual work, but a team working, and uh, it was uh, difficult to manage uh, with a uh, with a. Uh, from our teacher to manage uh, the the groups in, in an online modality. Uh, um, anyway, the the training will be open for the teachers. Uh, will still open, and uh, if somebody wants to to test this kind of a, of a methodology, um, can do also in the next month, uh, also after the uh, after the project end. I see another question about uh, the math subjects. Um, um, the pupils could uh, choose which uh, subject they want. So um, we have uh, stu uh, students that worked with surfaces, uh, students that uh, made uh, some with translations. So I had five groups, but uh, only three have a, a final result. So um, I think when you search a little bit, you can uh, do a lot with, with maths and, and um, art. Um, also, the, the three works of our students, I think, Michaela, they can find it also online eh, on the website. Yeah. So you can see there the, the different subjects we, we took from the, the math curriculum in Belgium. Okay, is the, the conversation is going on. First of all, I would like to thank both of you, Great and Michaela, for your presentation. And, uh, I would thank Great for sharing this uh, video. And again, you should be really, really proud of your students. First of all, because maybe they talk English better than than me. And and then for the great activity they did together, despite all the difficulties that we met in the last in the last year. So even more, we should thank. And uh, the impression that I got, I, I have knowledge about the project, but uh, I would say everything was one hundred percent clear after the presentation. It worked even better than any kind of. PowerPoint presentation and so on. That video is exactly what we meant within the project or some of the activities that we meant within the project. So you should thank your students again. So uh, the conversation is going on. Uh, you immediately replied to some questions coming from the audience. There is still time for a few questions about this presentation. And then I will leave the floor uh, uh, to Mikhail for the very last speech within this multiplier event. If there is any question from the audience, again, you can uh, just unmute your microphone and make directly your question, or you can use the public chat. Yes, Armina, I'd, I'd like uh, to, to ask something or not. It is uh, really interesting and is uh, a new approach. Uh, uh, so I believe you, it's absolutely effective. Uh, but uh, um, I'd like to ask you, um, w uh, what is the role of the teacher during uh, the work of pupils? So, because it seems that you leave completely free student to do what they want. Is it true or no? No, it's it's not. Uh, true. Okay. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, because um, I think you, yeah. Um, it was not possible. <laughs> We gave them a few uh, subjects of uh, our uh, math curriculum in Belgium that we think it's possible to link with an artwork because they, we have a lot of subjects that you not can uh, link with an artwork. This, that, that was my first work as a teacher. And then I let them start from scratch. But they know I'm always there, so um, they could um, ask me questions about, about um, their difficulties. Uh, so I was all, always online for them um, and every week they have to send to me um, uh, a little um, 
few uh, uh, examples, things they have found, uh, what they want to do, and then I give them feedback. That was the way we worked. Um, and we started, I think, um, in the middle of September, and we ended at the end of December, but it was a noon activity, so we have uh, one hour a week to work on it. So um, I think they did a lot of work at home too, because they like like it that's my uh, idea uh, this is uh, absolutely the, the the same experience that we had in in italy in another project eh? this is exactly the same um uh, only a suggestion if you want to increase the motivation uh, maybe at the end you can propose a, a small competition uh, not to uh, we don't want to stress the competition, okay, so only toward the the most, uh, uh, so the, all the best uh, results. But anyway, at, at the end, actually, we we give uh, an award to all. <laughs> but but it's something that uh, uh, um, give them a, a moment to show to the other uh, student, other pupils, what they have realized, and so they uh, they are really proud uh, in this moment. So we organize this annually, and uh, usually this uh, help all the groups to finish in some way their work. Okay, so this is only to share the the experience and not to teach anything to anybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Armida. I, I was not directly involved in the activities with the students, but I like the fact that uh, the focus is on the students rather than on the teachers, and that teacher work much more as, I would say, facilitators or uh, guides, supervisors, which is yeah. uh, the kind of direction school education is currently moving towards. But anyway, this would be a very, very long discussion. Uh, is there any other question? Yes, please. If you, if you may, can I, I have another question. I mean, I don't, I just have an idea about the project right now with your presentation. Um, from the example, I see that you use virtual arts, like pictures, like games. Um, are you using any other type of arts too, like musics, like, uh, yeah, this is my question. Just, just the pictures, just the visual arts, or are we using other types too? Um, I think there was also uh, from the pilot schools a project with music, mm -hmm. and uh, one of uh, my students used a very famous building in Belgium, na uh, the Atomium in Brussels. They mm -hmm. used that to do something about it. So it's more than just uh, a painting. There was music on it, um, buildings, architecture, all those things we, we have in the projects. Okay, your project also covers the other parts of the arts. So yes. I'm yes. going to go deep in your website, but uh, okay. and then I do, not have enough, I do not have a chance to ask this question, therefore, let me ask first. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. A very nice project. Good luck on that. Thank you. Absolutely. You, you can make reference to the website and you will uh, discover yes. further information. But anyway, again, uh, questions are, are welcome and this is the, the right moment to, to ask for a question. No, if, there is... and, uh, uh, if you need more information and uh, if you want to access uh, to the platform, uh, just email us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, good that the conversation is, is anyway going on and we are happy to reply to the questions coming from the audience. But now, I again, I would like to thank again Gret and Michaela for this presentation. And I would leave the floor to Mikhail for the last presentation within this multiplier event. Again, at the end of this last presentation, we will have still five minutes for questions and answers. So the presentation is there. I will immediately make Mikhail presenter. And please, the stage is yours. Oops, I forgot to unmute myself. Can you hear me now? Now it is perfect, please. 
Right, very good. Um, so good morning again, everybody, and uh, thank you, Antonio, for, for the introduction. So I'm going to try and describe a slightly different angle on, on what we've been up to in the GSTM project. Um, more specifically, I, I'd like to discuss some pointers as to how to engage students in coming up with game ideas to begin with. So my presentation is not going to be very specifically linked to the GSTM project. Um, as a matter of fact, I happen to believe that linking arts and science um, may not require examples of famous artworks uh, necessarily, although that's one way to do it. Um, making a digital game is in itself a combination of art and development of arts and engineering skills. So these kind of exercises can actually be extended, as far as I'm concerned, beyond the immediate context of the GS10 project. But before I start um, talking about that, I guess I, I need to introduce myself, first of all. So my name is Mihail Fedotso. I'm based at uh, Tallinn University, Estonia, where I teach uh, subjects related to game design and game studies in our digital learning games master's program, mostly. I'm also a game designer, and I've worked on various uh, research and development projects and educational games. And um, today I'd like to, as I mentioned, focus on the, the process of coming up with ideas. And the reason I wanted to, to discuss this um, is that out of my own experience and also fellow people who engage in, in game design education, um, I have noticed that it's quite tricky to just ask students or anyone really to come up with a game idea sort of on demand at the click of your fingers. It's generally the case that coming up with new ideas just because you have to isn't a very uh, straightforward procedure. Uh, and one thing that doesn't seem to help, uh, based on, on the research that, that we've seen, is experience with gaming. So counterintuitively, people who play a lot of video games um, are not necessarily the best people to go to uh, when it comes to designing them. This is the case among students in different levels of education, including in game design, because if you play a lot of video games and you're asked to make one, it's very tempting to just go and reach for this cool game that you've been playing recently that you're really into and try to replicate it rather than maintain some critical distance and try to do something more original. So that's a recurrent pattern. And one thing we've been trying to do in our course is to try and circumvent that a little bit and try and encourage people to, to come up with ideas that are more um, original and less similar to these other things they're familiar with is using various ideation or idea generation techniques. Um, to facilitate the creative process. And I'm going to introduce some of these techniques in this talk, uh, but I also would like to maybe provide some, some broader background for uh, how we think about ideation um, and promoting innovative ideas in the classroom. And so the first starting point uh, that I'd like to, to begin from is um, there's different kinds of innovation and there's different kinds of new ideas. Um, so one inspiration uh, that I'm drawing is from a book by Graham and Backman about ideation, and they distinguish between the following types of ideas. This is not necessarily a strict or mutual exclusive typology, but there you go. Uh, so there's derivative ideas, but the, the premise is you have a thing that already exists, you modify something about the thing, and then you have a something new on a sort of incremental uh, level. So you used to have not a game-related example, obviously, um, the soft drink industry that was producing things like Coke and Pepsi for, for years. And then you had a more con health-conscious demographic that was interested in healthier lifestyles. And someone realized that we can actually uh, appeal to that demographic as well by reducing the sugar content. And then we had something like uh, Diet Coke. That would be a derivative idea. Some ideas emerge at the intersection of existing things, where you just mash two things together and turn them into one. Uh, that is called a symbiotic idea. So people used to have phones that they would use to call other people, and they used to have cameras. And then someone had the idea of why don't we actually combine these things um, and uh, um, into to one device, and then we have smartphones with cameras. Um, Revolutionary ideas, as Graham and Backman called them, or evolutionary ideas, as I would prefer to, to see them labeled, is something sort of paradigm breaking, something that completely changes the field. They use the World Wide Web um, as an example, but it is important to acknowledge that no idea exists without its precursors. It must build upon something in order 
to, to come to fruition. Um, if the idea is completely new, no one knows what to do with it. So the internet was based on prior uh, computer networks, such as the Apronet that existed before. It just did it on a much bigger, broader global scale. Um, serendipitous discovery, some people may be familiar with the term serendipity is basically coming across a good idea by chance without necessarily planning to. Um, so Alexander Fleming with um, the, the, the scientist, the biologist who discovered penicillin, basically after leaving his own lab in disarray overnight and then discovering that some mold had formed on the pantry dishes that he had neglected um, cleaning the day before. That was the way penicillin was discovered that uh, saved millions of lives later and won him the Nobel Prize. So you don't always plan for this kind of thing. And, and in recent years, you see um, technology being involved a lot more in um, ideation uh, practices. So a lot of people will have come across different kind of idea generators or prompt generators online that will give you normally some randomized combination of elements to, to make sense of that may serve as a starting point for a new idea. Our students have actually made one, which I'm not able to, to show you due to the time constraints. Uh, but it's basically an idea generation machine for learning games that will randomly give you a target audience, a game design element, a societal problem to, to, to tackle with the game and so on. And a lot of the time it will not make any sense because these are just random elements. But sometimes it will get you thinking in a productive direction. Right. Regardless of the specific type of idea, I guess the basic premise that we're trying to promote is um, in our daily lives, we're dealing with a lot of information. Uh, our senses are flooded. There's a lot of stuff going on around us. And just to survive this onslaught of information coming from all these different sources on a sensorial and intellectual level, we have to rely on mental shortcuts. We have to rely on conventional sort of thinking patterns and the thing called conversion thinking where there's basically standard correct responses to given situations that we go back to, fall back on when we can't be bothered to analyze them on a deeper level, right? Most people do not deeply think where they're going on their way from home to work because this is the path that had been trodden um, for many years, right? But for something new to emerge, we actually need to be doing the exact opposite of that. We need to be breaking down habitual thinking patterns. We need to be looking for um, un obvious associations um so that is called divergent thinking we need to may we need to have uh, we may need to have uh to think back to some old and forgotten memories that um, are in conflict with a recency bias to so rediscover something from the past um and that's actually one of the reasons why dreams are such a potent source of ideas conventional thinking and formal logic doesn't really work there um, and a lot of things you wouldn't have remembered otherwise kind of resurface and get you thinking in, in a different kind of direction. So um, basically, a lot of the ideation techniques, uh, including those that I'm going to be introducing today, um, are reliance on promoting this divergent thinking. But what's also important to acknowledge, and that's something we try to communicate to our students as well, that innovation is an incremental process. So new ideas are not entirely new because if someone came up with something that was completely um, new and unrelated to anything else ever done before, we would have zero idea what to do with it. And we also need to contextualize these new ideas. When we have a new idea, um, think back to uh, the convergent thinking patterns of what can we do with it? What is the context of the application for this new idea? So how do we make sense of this new thing we came up with? And I'll give you one specific game related example just, just to um, exemplify uh, what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, one mechanic of innovation is actually by reduction. So instead of creating more things or adding new dimensions, you take something that has been taken for granted and you get rid of one specific element and you see what happens there. So what would video games, for example, be without graphics? Well, they would be audio games. So that's a new idea, or at least in the context of this example, let's assume it is. Uh, but why would anyone want to have an audio game? Well, if you think about it, um, there is a demographic waiting for these kind of games in people with a visual disability uh, for whom regular video games are not accessible. Uh, but also, considering how reliant we have become as a society on visual information, there's a lot of strain on the eye. So, for the same reason people are listening to audiobooks, um, audio games might be an appealing interactive version of that. And in fact, now with the advent of uh, digital 
or personal assistants like um, Alexa, these are becoming increasingly popular as a media form. In fact, it's not really a new idea. It has existed for almost 30 years now, uh, and there is a sizable community of people with a visual disability who play audio games. But what I'm getting at is when uh, it's not enough to ask students to come up with new ideas, you also need to make sense of how to use them. What is the point? Um, and no idea is inherently good or bad, uh, but the context that you're surrounded with, that is what matters a lot um, in order for the idea to actually properly click and to make sense. So um, fundamentally, there's many different ways to classify idea generation techniques. Um, there are mass idea generation techniques. Brainstorming would be, I guess, the most loose one uh, and also the one people are the most familiar with. But also there's other techniques like C3-5, which I will introduce in a moment, and other things you can also try in the classroom. The basic premise is you generate ideas until you come up with something that you surprise yourself with, right? So at some point, quality just follows quantity. You'll go for the obvious things immediately when you're asked to come up with an idea, then you've exhausted all the obvious options and you have to think elsewhere, and you'll start going for associations that may not make sense, uh, the first hundred times, and then you'll come up with something that, in retrospect, will be brilliant without you really meaning to um, provide that kind of idea. I have a colleague in the United States who asks his game design students to generate a thousand game ideas over uh, the duration of the one semester course he's teaching, uh, and the, the rationale for that is most of these will be rubbish, but one or two of them will probably, statistically speaking, be gems that are really interesting to work with. So that is the basic premise of a lot of these techniques. However, there's other techniques as well that rather focus on a single idea, just, just one thing that arises out of a particular technique. Um, and these include the fantastic binomials, camper, and some other techniques. And I've kind of foreshadowed which ones we are going to be talking about in, in this session. So let me introduce some of them. Uh, we have some Italians in the audience, so I hope that um, the figure of Gianni Rodari uh, will resonate with some. He is was a famous children's writer and educator. Um, I don't know how well known he is in the, the rest of the world. He was quite popular um, in the post-Soviet region as well when I was growing up. A uh, very well translated um, children's author, um, very sympathetic to the communist regime, which could account for his um fame in in that part of the world uh but he was also an educator and a practitioner who wrote a book about creativity uh and promoting imagination in, in children's education uh and one technique he introduces there is the fantastic binomial it's a very simple idea you combine two things that naturally don't go together and you try to make sense of the combination. And this can be done in in very different ways you can just randomly pull towards from a dictionary um, or what he did in the classroom is he would ask two students to come to the blackboard, um, look at the opposite sides of the blackboard, uh, have a piece of chalk in hand, think of one word, any word, and without looking at what the other person is doing, write down that word on the blackboard. And you just come up with two words that have normally uh, very little in common, very little obvious connection between them, but then the students would need to collaborate right there on the spot on a story based on these two words. So, for example, let's imagine one student writes onion, onion. the other student writes oppression. Um, I don't know why the student would be so concerned with um, things like that, but they have a combination that seems incongruous at first sight. But if you start making sense of it, it really doesn't have to be. As a matter of fact, one of the better known works by Rodari is about um, an onion boy called Cipollino who basically leads a revolt um, of vegetables against the oppressive uh, signori uh, tom tomato, I think it was. Um, so it's basically a political, a leftist political message thinly veiled as a children's fairy tale based on seemingly a ridiculous premise, but it was it was quite popular back in the day, at least in the post soviet world. They had a cartoon and a live action film. Um, imagine that based on this premise. It doesn't have to be that. Um, art and STEM may actually be one of these combinations of things. They don't seem to naturally go together, but if you make sense of it, um, they might. So let's uh, look at some slightly more advanced techniques, maybe. 
um, 635 brain writing may be familiar to some of you. It's a great technique when you have a group of people and you want them to come up with ideas together. Um, so what happens is basically you get people to write down, uh, everybody gets a sheet of paper. They have five minutes to write down three ideas. Once the five minutes elapse, um, you can do it clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, they will pass over, um, pass on their worksheets to the, the next person. They'll receive another worksheet with three ideas on it already from someone else. And then they have another five minutes to read the ideas that are there um, and have three more. And they continue doing that in a circle until ultimately in half an hour, you've generated 108 ideas per group. Uh, and the brilliance of that is that you don't have to verbally communicate, but because you ask them to read through other people's ideas before adding more on the same sheet, uh, they will uh, draw inspiration from each other's ideas. So without having arguments and debates about whose idea is better, um, there will be some kinds of consensus emerging over time, a lot of the time at least. Uh, and then there's still discussion needed and evaluation needed, but you'll find that people are A, more or less familiar with the different range of ideas that has been presented and be more sort of forthcoming and cooperative when it comes to coming up with something that they can work on together. Obviously, you don't always have um, groups that are easily divisible by six, so there might be other configurations um, that you might need to try out, but that's the one approach that we use with game design exercises and it works uh, quite, quite nicely there. Um, and finally, I guess my go-to technique um, for different kind of ideation workshops uh, that I've done with different age groups as well, and it normally seems to, to work quite fine, is SCAMPER. So again, people might be familiar with that one. It's an acronym, uh, and the basic sort of premise for SCAMPER is it can be used to modify existing things and to create this sort of derivative incremental innovation based on something that exists. And the letters in Scamper stand for these different verbs, the different actions that you can apply to existing ideas, which are substitute, combine, adapt, magnify, put to another use, eliminate, and reverse. Sometimes there's um, different words being used, but this is the um, this is how I'm interpreting Scamper. Let me give you some specific examples, first of all, uh, related to games more broadly. So substitute, let's take something like Tetris, but instead of the virtual two-dimensional units, Tetraminos, they're called in Tetris, you have real life units. So physical blocks that will be sliding down um, a flat surface that you need to arrange according to their color. Then you have something that's much closer to a physical exercise. It has been done at various um, conventions and exhibitions as a sort of a um, crowd engagement activity. And it obviously makes for a very different experience than a regular digital um, Tetris game, but it obviously also draws a transpiration from that. Um, so there's that, then there's combine. So basically that's the fantastic binomial technique as part of Scamper. Combine two things that don't always obviously go together. In video games, there's a very popular genre of games called Tower Defense, where the premise is you have some kind of structure or base that is being attacked by waves of invaders of some kind, and you need to defend it by building some kind of defensive structures around it. Uh, and then you have a very different type of game that uh, involves uh, farming simulation, so planting um, trees and shrubs and flowers and whatnot, collecting crops, these kind of things. Um, one game designer thought, why don't we combine these two into a single game and they came up with plants versus zombies which is um again seemingly an incongruous game where you plant different kind of vegetation um in order to protect your farm your garden from invading zombies doesn't seem to make a lot of sense it's a very popular game and it's really fun to play so there you go adapt that refers to the idea of borrowing something from another context um, and adapting it to the context at hand. So let's say, let's talk about distribution models for a second. Uh, in the earlier days of video game, and the typical way you'd uh, purchase a game it would be you download it, or you go to the store, you buy a physical copy, that's yours forever, that's a single game right there, very much like a book, let's say. Um, Compare that to the TV industry where um, stories are normally told in shorter episodes that comprise uh, bigger narrative arcs referred to as seasons. Uh, well, some game developers 
thought, why don't we try and do that? We release games in shorter installments, which allows us to procure the budget for the next installments uh, as we keep doing that, and also sort of gauge the public response and see what kind of things we may need to, uh, to change. And then we have games like the um, Walking Dead series of games based on the eponymous comic that use this as a business model. Magnify. Um, that is actually quite an interesting technique. So take something that's already there and make more of it. Uh, one example that I like to go to is uh, three-sided football, which is obviously football, but with three teams. And I'd love to talk more about it, but I think I don't have the time. Uh, look it up. It's a really confusing game to watch, fun game to play. Um, something I've only done once in my life. Be put to another use. Um, basically use the thing that's meant for some purpose for some other purpose. Uh, some people might be familiar with Fold It, which is a puzzle game based on people competitively solving protein structures in the human DNA. Um, the people solving the puzzles are just regular gamers, really, but, the, but doing so actually helped a community of researchers uh, decipher some of the protein structures in the human DNA that they had been struggling with for years prior to that. So you took a video game, put it to another use, and yielded some results for science. Eliminate or minimize refers to the idea where you take something, it's basically the opposite of magnify, something that's already there, you reduce it to the bare minimum, eliminates most of it. In most video games, you have a complex control scheme where there's different buttons controlling whether the player goes in some direction or fires a projectile or jumps or does something. And then you have games like Flappy Bird where it's really just one simple mechanic, just, just touching the screen at a certain time. That's the only thing you need to do. And it's still engaging enough, um, if not super deep, um, playful experience. Finally, R reverse refers to the idea that you can uh, basically change the dynamic um, that exists somewhere, um, invert it into something else. So in most role-playing games, if you're familiar with the genre, what happens is the character gradually grows stronger by accumulating experience and uh, getting more skills. Uh, and then there's a game called To Wash that is basically an awareness-raising game about um, age-related dementia. Um, it's a very sad game to play, but the premise is you start off very strong and you sort of gradually decline in power. It's, it's not fun to play, but it's a it's, um, rather powerful piece. That would be my reverse example. Um, so our students have combined these in very different ways, from turning a simple snake game into math-solving equations to more personally to um, the GSTEM project coming up with a minigame. Um, about geometry that is also inspired by Mondrian's art. And basically you um, solve different kind of challenges like um, picking the object with the biggest perimeter or estimating the largest area within a certain geometric shape. Uh, and when you choose the correct um, option by sort of flying into it, it takes on a different color and different patterns start to emerge that are really um, resembling um, Mondrian's art. So that would be one example of integrating these two different dimensions. What I wanted to do today, and I'm realizing that I maybe don't have the time to do that, but I'll just show you the slides anyway, is this kind of exercise that I've been using with uh, children and, and sort of shorter game design workshops, where I ask them to choose one game, one method out of Scamber, look at it and think if they can come up with some ideas. So here's some of the games that I'm using. Hopefully they might be familiar and the verbs as well. And you may, in just a few moments, maybe think to yourselves, um, what could I do with these sets of verbs and with, with one or two of these games if I want to combine them? And um, it sometimes produces very interesting things. Like in the social sciences um, context, there was a suggestion, for example, to have a monopoly game, where instead of making the most profit, you have to donate the most money to charity. So people come up with very different things um, in these settings. So basically, techniques exist out there are obviously no guarantee that um, every time they will produce quality ideas. In fact, as Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi wrote and argued in his book on creativity systems, creativity is a social process. Um, it, 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 uh, it requires social interaction, it requires appreciation and collaboration, and, um, and it's an effort of more than a single mind. Um, ideas, as I mentioned before, need feedback, they need reflection, they need context. So discussing them with students is the next step after generating them to help students make sense of what they came up with and develop these ideas further. Um, but coming up with new ideas is fun and it's important to emphasize that aspect. So not just 
deal with it like a, a rudimentary task they have to go through, uh, but emphasize the shared um, sense of having fun. Because creativity is a rewarding process, but also it's not just the nice idea that determines the success of this or that game or any project really, is the implementation. So ideas can only take you so far. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I would um, like to conclude and uh, let's see if we have any questions in the remaining minutes or so. Sorry for going over time. Okay, so I'm seeing that we have... Um... Okay, so Fleming is a myth. Perhaps so. It is a nice story, though. Uh, so let's just stick with that for narrative purposes. I do believe genuinely that pain discoveries are serendipitous. Um, but thanks for pointing that out. Um, so, yeah, Gianni Verdati's book is, is there. We will have a recording of the video as well if you want to revisit. Uh, I had the references and the slides as well. Um, Verdati's book is um, has been translated into... Um, Portuguese, evidently, Russian, I think only partly into English, some of the sections, but the bit about the fantastic binomial has been translated. Um, so people um, discuss different types of yeah, how to approach uh, game design. So the idea of designing a mechanic first and then coming up with uh, the narrative afterwards, it's not really specific for Nintendo. Uh, there's a framework in game design called MDA, which is normally, it starts with mechanics design and then you go for the more sort of aesthetic components. Um, no, uh, Chris, to answer your question, these techniques are not just for generating themes and ideas. Um, game design is an iterative process. So you come up with an idea, you do some quick prototyping, you test it out with uh, a bunch of players in, in an ideal setting. And then you can use the very same ideas um, or ideation techniques to reevaluate or tweak your results when you realize that something isn't quite working, people don't notice this thing, people don't seem to think this mechanic is fun, uh, you can sort of iteratively adjust it, which is why I've been going on about how creativity is an incremental process. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I don't know why I don't have a Slavic accent. I hope I don't have too much of a Slavic accent when I speak English. Uh, I, I'm basically suspecting that might have to do with me playing video games a lot as a kid. Uh, with American voiceovers, uh, because we didn't have localized versions available where I grew up, um, although that's not necessarily related to the project. So I think that should be about it. If you have any, any further comments, one thing I forgot to do is leave my email, but maybe I'll just post it here in the chat if you want to reach out um, and discuss something more specifically related to, to my talk. So thank you, everybody. May I ask a question? What do you mean by quality follows quantity? At that point, I'm, I, I'm, I don't understand very well. What I'm saying is, statistically speaking, if you're using brainstorming, um, your first idea and your second idea and your third idea will not necessarily be very good. If you're not a creative genius, chances are, with brainstorming exercises, um, you need a certain quantity of ideas uh, for one or two good ideas to sort of crop up among them. So that's the idea. Uh, if you brainstorm for one idea, chances are it won't be immediately brilliant. Um, it's precisely because you have to think in different ways and try to look beyond the obvious things, uh, the things like brainstorming or 635 work. That, that was maybe not the best way to formulate that, but that was the point I was trying to get across. Thanks, Mikhail, for this interesting presentation, and thanks for already replying to all the questions coming from the audience. We are a bit late according to the timetable, but anyway, if there is any other question from the audience, please, that is the time. Okay, as I said, Mikhail already replied to the questions which were put in the, in the public chat. So I would say that this is uh, this was us. This was the GSM project. The multiplier event is now over, and the project will be over in a few days. So I would like to thank again all the project partners for being here and uh, for their interesting inputs, and also for this 
three years that we spent together in producing some interesting results. And the, uh, the presentation that we had today and again, the video produced by the students are a further confirmation that we did a kind of good work, good stuff to be used. And I would say, uh, again, I would thank all the partners and all the participants in this multiplier event. So you can make reference to the GSTEM website. You can contact us because the project will be over in a few days. But anyway, we will keep on uh, uh, promoting the project. We will keep on replying to uh, any kind of questions coming to the partnership. And the results will be will be there. Most of them have been published on the website. Um, the missing ones will be published in the next days, in particular for the translations. But anyway, I would say 90% of what we did in, in the last three years is, is there and can be used by all. We would be really happy to have several teachers using the materials that we produced within the GSM project. So thanks again, everybody, for this participation, for uh, your questions, uh, for your interesting inputs, and for this uh, discussion that we had within this session. So this morning session is now over. I, I make reference to the uh, participants in the conference. The, uh, this session, the, morning, the first morning session is over. According to the uh, conference program, now we, you will have the morning break until uh, uh, half past 11. So we were only five minutes late. You have 25 minutes break and then you will start again uh, with the second morning session, uh, which will be a focus on student assessment. Thanks. Thanks again for your participation. Uh, and I hope we will meet again. I'm uh, in terms of participation in the project, in terms of uh, use of what we produce and, and so on. Thanks again for, for uh, your support and for your participation.